Here with episode 10 of Inside the Lair with former BMCC men's basketball player Victor Bovacevic, two time CUNY All Star, back to back conference champion. He joins us here on this segment. Victor, thank you for joining us. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I always love doing stuff like this, especially for BMCC. Very appreciative that you guys uh, called me up to do an interview. It's our pleasure to have you. I've asked several players about this when it comes to why they attended BMCC a lot of them say to me it was the location Anthony McLean your teammate on that championship team the first one you were on you were on two championship teams back to back said only school that wanted me why did you choose BMCC and why was it such a good fit for you to start academically I think my description of it is going to be way different from other athletes because how it all started was I was in Serbia and my dad got a job in New York City. He just told me like, hey, we're leaving in three months, we're going to New York City. I didn't know how colleges were. I didn't even know what a JUCO was. I, I, I didn't know anything. So we came to New York City. I still didn't have a school. I was trying to reach out to schools. It was August already. So most schools already recruited and they have their players ready. So my dad was like, hey, I was looking at schools and there's a school, you know, it's close to the river, it's in Manhattan, it's really nice, you should go check it out. So I contacted the coach G, obviously, we met, we just walked around, he showed me the school, we talked, and I was like, okay, yeah, this is where I'm going to go. I don't know what's in store, I didn't meet any of the players, That I just met coach, and that's it, I was like, okay, this is, this is where I'm going to go. I think everything happens for a reason, and it was probably one of the better decisions I've made. How did BMCC help you grow from an intellectual standpoint, you know, and maturity-wise, too, in those two years? It helped a lot. I think um, the, um, it helped because I just came into America. I didn't really know where I was, what I was doing, and I think the people that helped me the most were definitely the coaching staff, Coach Mike, uh, Coach JJ, Coach G, and then uh, the players. I heard this being mentioned on interviews, and I can't stress this enough. It was really a family vibe, like uh, like no other. I it's it's hard to explain, really. Um, they will help you in any way they can. That's how I grew through those people, and they helped me the most. We're here with episode 10 of Inside the Lair with former BMCC men's basketball player Victor Kovacevic, big time player, 41 overall wins in those two seasons that he was there, including the second season his team got to number two in the National Junior College rankings. So Victor, what are your teammates on the team the first year you were at BMCC to play basketball? Anthony McLean was in his sophomore season. The team had gone just about over 500, and then comes the second year of Tommy Garen, and a great recruiting class comes in that at least everyone reports about. Curtis Smith, who could really shoot the Jays. Perron Dublin, the school's 1,000-point score, back-to-back cutie player of the year. Alou Cisse was a good sixth man. But you're one of the catalysts that I don't think people really reported about. You had an outstanding season that year and really came out of the sea beautifully scoring. But it was a team that really was really, really loaded, really with experience and then young talent. And it came together for 21 wins and a perfect conference record. What was it that made the youth and the experience mesh so well to have such a successful season? Something I want to mention is, yeah, not a lot of people might have reported or a lot of coaches considered me like one of the main guys on the team. That didn't matter to me because my uh, teammates would always come up to me and say, hey, you're the X factor for this game. We need a good game from you to win. Like they knew my worth and that's all that mattered to me. And the main thing, as Ant has mentioned and Karan, is just the teammates and how good we got along. Nobody cared about their playing time or the, anything. It was all about just winning. Like, for me, I never even looked at my stats after the game. All I cared was winning and cheering on my teammates, even when I'm on the bench, which was rare, but because I was the only tall guy there. But that's all I cared about, is just winning and having a fun time with these guys. And that 
also was at practice. There's this coach that always says you're supposed to bully each other at practice because that's the only way you can get better. And that's what they did. Every practice, we would fight. Like, literally, not like fight physically, but it would be, we would push each other to get better. Nobody would go easy on you. Not one player. That's what made everybody better. It would look like we hated each other on the court at practices. And then once you got into the locker room, it was like, what is going on here? Like, it's just like a family vibe. It's, it's like nothing happened on the court. It was really that atmosphere, I think, translated just to on-court stuff. And we were just able to win. That's pretty much it. As I heard in a previous interview from Anthony McLean, there were times, too, where Coach Tommy Guerin said, hey, guys, settle down. It's 6 o'clock. Get out of the gym. Build on that point. It's got to be kind of crazy because you said, well, I don't worry about my stats. And yeah, it doesn't seem like the, the wins matter. But you guys, it seemed when you were practicing so hard like that, it, you guys could have went all day. It, it was just you didn't want it to end. As an athlete, I've been in many teams. And when the atmosphere is not really there, people don't really want to be there. These guys, every single guy wanted to be at the gym. Coach Mike. I don't think this man gets enough credit for what he's done. Everybody knows assistant coaches at that level don't really get paid that much, but he would show up to work every day early, coming from Staten Island, taking a game like an hour to get there. He would come early because players asked him to come early so they could work out. And Karan, Lou, whoever was there, he would come early. And I think he was one of the X factors of the coaching staff that really brought this team to another level because he would even stay after practice if he could it's not like he showed up miserable he would show up with bands so people could work out and do skill and stuff so i think that's how you could see that people actually wanted to be there they would be early they would stay after practice it was totally crazy you talked about how everyone used to go at each other at practice for our viewers i think there's an interesting practice story you want to mention uh, you were telling me in the pre-interview, uh, you said, I have to say this, I have to get this on the interview. You show up at practice, and no one's there, and y you find out something surprising later, that the Cleveland Cavaliers, I think this is when LeBron was there, they're in town. Anthony McLean, the guys, went to go see them at the hotel. You talk about your teammates and competing with them on the court so hard at practice. That was a hard practice for another reason. I found it funny because this was a bonding moment for us. Yeah, as you said, I showed up to practice and there was maybe like two of us there. And I was like, the practice like started already. It's 10 minutes into practice. I'm like, where's everybody? Like, what's going on? And, and I'm waiting and people start like slowly showing up. And people are like, you know, coach, I, sorry, I had class, this, that. And then coach pressured one of the players, I think. And he was like, coach, listen, the Cleveland Cavaliers were in town. It was LeBron James. There was a couple other players that they wanted to see. They were like, oh, guys, come on. We got we to gotta go see them. They go try to see them. The worst part is they didn't even see LeBron. <laughs> they didn't even get to see him. So they show up late to practice. And I'm like, oh, oh God, I, I already know what's going to happen. So Coach G has us running around all three of the courts at BNCC. They have the speed crowd playing the Cleveland Cavaliers intro. It was just so funny, and it was such a great moment to just remember. You're here with episode 10 of Inside the Lair with former BMCC men's basketball player Victor Kovacevic, who's fourth all-time in scoring in program history with 662 career points, tied fourth with 460 career rebounds. 29 games you started that 2017-18 season, part of 41 combined wins, back-to-back -back conference titles in the two years at BMCC. Also, a little side note, Coach Mike was also kind of like a big brother to you guys. I mean, would you say that too? Oh, 100%. I even text Coach Mike, like, to this day. If I have problems, not just, not just on the court with, like, basketball and stuff, I have problems off the court that I don't really know how to deal with or need advice. You can always test Coach Mike. Say with your first season there, top 10 in the nation at five statistical categories, field goal percentage, three-point field goal percentage, scoring. You attributed to all of those things. Getting more into this here in your first season, 21-9, 8-0, perfect in conference play. You get to the final against Kingsboro, and you guys just come out firing. You were red hot in that first half. 17 of your 21 in that game were in the first half. You jump out to a monstrous halftime lead against Kingsborough of 51-35, and yet somehow they battle back. You need some late shots in that game from Anthony McLean. You were 
laser focused in that game. Yeah. So laser focused that your teammates were just blown away. They're like, well, I wish I woke up like him this, this morning. Talk about the wave of emotions in that game from the start to finish that helped you get the victory in the conference championship. I think for me, I was very motivated to play Kingsboro because whenever we played Kingsboro, they would never talk about me. They, it would always be like, oh, he can't shoot the first game and then I shoot. He can't do this. He can't do that. People were saying that, oh, they, there's, their big men are so much bigger because they're bigger size and they're going to just um, have a field day with Vic. That motivated me to just come out and be so dominant that they don't even notice those guys. And I think I accomplished that in the first half by uh, showing that those guys can't shoot like me and can't go to the bucket. I was very happy with that first half. I, I think I showcased uh, what I was trying to show. My teammates were always there. They were always like, hey, you're the X Factor. We need you for this game. This is the finals. I always like stepping up when it's crunch time. Then to translate to the second half, we did struggle a little bit, but we were a very poised team. We trusted each other. Everybody trusted each other on the court. Nobody wanted to play hero ball. We got the ball. Uh, to somebody that was open and in that case it was Ant and he hit a shot because we trusted him. We were very emotional at the end winning because when you put so much hard work throughout the whole season and coming into practices th that is why you put in all that work. And obviously something else to really harp on on that game how much did the depth come into play because yes you were scoring, Iran was scoring, Anthony McLean provided the knockout punch. Curtis Smith was great defensively, transition game scoring. But then you look at these other players that really helped contribute. Lawrence Todman played well. Mark Morgan, really a guy that Anthony McLean said used to just kill him in practice. Talk about, we've mentioned that obviously, but you know, the depth helped you get that victory too. It really helped at times when really there were droughts from the key players. Yeah. Um, I think the way you could see that we had so much depth is uh, Coach G may have to play press the whole game. And whenever somebody was tired, there's somebody else in to come in to provide energy. Sometimes in basketball, people that, like, are coming off the bench, sometimes they think, oh, I should be starting, I should be this. And these guys would just come in and provide so much energy, like, and did not care. They just played their game. And they played it amazing. As you mentioned, Lawrence Todman, he, he, he was our foreman at I don't even know how tall he is. <laughs> uh, uh, Ray Bong Fleming, he, he would come in and – just box everybody out and he would provide so much energy and he would get charges left and right. We had so many people that could just score also if one person wasn't going. Actually, I think we got Alex too at the end of our semester and he could shoot the ball like crazy. I think he was like close to Quran's numbers when it came to percentages. Uh, so yeah, we had, if somebody wasn't going, like I wasn't going in the second half, like I was in the first half, there was somebody else to step up. And we always had somebody that you had to watch out for. Anthony McLean said his final year, his goal was to make sure to build team chemistry, that everyone would be with each other, even going to barbecues with each other. I would like to know who was the best cook on the team. Well, that'll be the second part of this question. How important was that? I mean, the fact that you had vets that wanted really everyone to be together, eat together, be together, take the trade in together. When I first got there, me and Ed, we would go at each other at practice. We would yell at each other. And then as the season went on and we got to know each other more and more and hang out after practice and stuff, we figured out that we're all here for the same goal and we're all here to have fun and be a big family. And we just bonded very fast. And uh, we still have a relationship to this day. I text him, see how he is. And the vets definitely helped. It would always be laughs in the locker room. It would never be arguments or physical altercation. It would always just be smiling and laughing. Now about the barbecues, I don't, uh, I don't know who the best cook is. I'm not going to say, but uh, we definitely hit up McDonald's a lot <laughs> right there on the corner. <laughs> I think all McDonald's right. was the best cook right there. Here on episode 10 of Inside the Lair with Victor Pavacevic, two-time CUNY All-Star. Two-time conference champ, back-to-back, -back, also fourth in all-time scoring with 662 career points. Now, Victor, let's go here to the next season. Kind of a role reversal with Karan Dublin, Alex Humphries, and Raybon Fleming. You're now the upperclassman, and you go into this season. Clearly, though he had to set the tone, your team comes out, 14 straight wins, winning 14 of your first 15. You shoot up to number two 
in the National Junior College rankings. Coming into that season, you lost so much experience-wise, but how were you able to just rip off 14 straight wins and just keep it going? I honestly didn't even have to do much. I had playmakers around me, and I didn't have to do anything. I just had to put the ball in the hoop whenever somebody passed it to me or just play my game totally comfortably because we had our whole starting five was just vets, like second-year players from Ron, Alex, Sean, and me. Everybody on the court could score. If you pass it down to Sean, he would just dunk it. You pass it to Karan, he would just shoot it from half court. It'd go in. <laughs> like, when he shoots the ball, it, you just think it's going in every time. And same for Alex. It was so comfortable. Even when we were in games that were close or that we started off bad, I never doubted not one second that we were going to lose the game. Like, some games we would just play one half and then just sit out the second half. It was very comfortable and fun. The main thing is it was fun to play those guys. Like, even if I shot the ball only three times a game, it was still fun. Like, I, I can't explain it. It was just fun to play with those guys. So, you mentioned to me before, you didn't have to really do much because you had all that talent around you. You said, ah, well, occasionally we would uh, maybe sleep the uh, second half of one of the games. Well, I can't say you did that, but you definitely got punched in the mouth early when you played in that conference final the following season 2018 2019 you're down at halftime to host those uh, 49 44 you outscore them 60 to 41 in the second half what was the difference in the championship game from the previous year i think the biggest thing was when kingford came into the game the year before it kind of seemed like they were just ready to get it over with. Hostos was hungry for a win. They wanted to battle. Like, they didn't fear us at all and what we had. Not at all. For me, personally, I got into foul trouble very early and throughout the whole game. It was just a very, very good game, and they had a lot of energy. We definitely never underestimated teams, but we definitely didn't expect them to just come out and punch in the mouth like that at the start. It shows that we had a lot of experience and a lot of talent that we were able to stay poised and Alex hit some tough shots. Hugh came back and hit a lot of shots. Like, we had efforts from everybody. Everybody stepped up and was very poised and very smart about how they played. And then once I got in after some time on the bench because of foul trouble, we were able to turn it around and just turn it on all of a sudden and show how talented we actually are and come out with a win. So I think everybody just stepped up and showed that we weren't just a three-man team, four-man team. We, were, we had depth that year as well. What did it feel like, back-to-back -back conference championships? The first time, it was definitely it was exciting. You could really see the relationships and just how much you built in two years. You know, the hugging between coaches and you. I mean, it just seemed like a fun ride, and uh, it's, that's a good image in your head to keep. Of course. Those guys are so fun to be around. Like, if I could just hang out with those people, I would. And... Yeah, we were happy that season. Yeah, we were happy about uh, winning the conference, everything. But we were always hungry for more. We always wanted that regional title, that national title. And yes, we took it day by day. But we would always talk about how this is what we want. This is our goal, our bigger goal. Unfortunately, we weren't able to. I would have rather had fun like that than not have fun and go and win the national championship. I wanted to do it with that team. I would not want to do it with any other team. I was very happy that I was able to do what we did in those two years with that team and have so much fun. Here with episode 10 of Inside the Lair with former BMCC men's basketball player Victor Lovacevic, two-time CUNY All-Star back-to-back conference champion. Your time here at BMCC, a lot of accomplishments on the court. Let's go to the academic side. You're into computer science. It's clearly a field that really there's no shortage of jobs. There's IT, you know, there's programming. Uh, Rayvon Fleming eventually wanted to make that next app, so he's kind of followed that path, too, he told me earlier in the summer. As a computer science major, where do you look on taking that down the road? I'm really satisfied with how that's going. As you mentioned, it's definitely a developed field nowadays, and... I think down the line, people are going to have to learn it at schools. Or it will be like a class in high schools, at least. If basketball doesn't work out and I'm not going to play basketball, I have computer science. And yes, I would love to work in that field. There's so many fields from artificial intelligence, uh, pen testing. I can go on and on. I'm looking at trying to get an internship at a big company this summer to put it on my resume. So I am 
kind of ensured that I can get a job after I finish college. If I could tell more people to get into this field and major, I definitely would. You'll never not get a job in this field. It's always somewhere where you can get a job. And there's so many paths that you can take with this job as well. Great to hear really what you're doing in your future. And uh, stay safe. Thank you really for joining us. I'm sorry for delaying you today on that. <laughs> That's fine. Of course, I love these kind of interviews and, and talking about uh, myself and my a little about my career. I appreciate it a lot, and I hope that uh, everyone is safe now in these times. So that's pretty much it. We are appreciative of you joining us. Oh, Thank okay. you, Victor. <laughs> of course.